Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, and welcome back. Welcome back to Porsche Cooled, and welcome back to Owner Stories. Number 73 today. Who have I got today? I've got Dan. Dan's going to join me very, very shortly. Dan's coming in from New York. Dan's a friend of uh, Rich, who's been on the podcast before, who's been on Owner Stories, Rich Carrera-licious from New Jersey. You'll remember him from number... Let me check my notes. Number 56. I had to write that down because I would have forgotten. Um... Dan reached out to me through Instagram. That's the best place to reach out to me through for this new, uh, I don't want to call it new series, but the new start of owner stories that I'm doing. Um, I'm not sure how many I'm going to do, but we'll do a few. But if you want to be on owner stories, just reach out to me on Instagram. DM me on Instagram at Porsche Cooled. Uh, make sure you give Porsche Cooled a follow. I'm trying to get to 20,000 followers on uh, Instagram for Porsche Cooled. We're getting there. Only about 1,000 to go. Um, I don't know what it really means in the end. at the end of the day, but... Anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a goal, isn't it? You've always got to have a goal in life, something to, uh, to work towards. But anyway, Dan's going to join me very, very shortly. Uh, Dan's got a good story. He's, uh, he's owned Porsches for quite some time, um, and he's got a really cool one at the moment, which you would have seen in the title, one of my favorite generations, for obvious reasons. So let me just uh, make sure everything's working here, and let me get Dan uh, from New York to talk about his Porsche Cooled owner story. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Owner Stories, and welcome back to the podcast. Like I said, this is number 73, and I am now joined by Dan. Dan's coming in from the US. He's coming in from New York. Dan, good afternoon. How are you? Uh, I am doing great, Michael. It is an honor to be here with you today, and it's great to hear your voice back on the mic again. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, actually, because you reached out. I mean, I did say in the little intro before you came online, um, you reached out, me, reached out to me through Instagram. And it was quite some time ago, wasn't it? You reached out to me, I think, just before, was it last year? I think it was, was it early this year or last year? It was a little while no. ago, I know. Yeah, it was the end of last year. Um, and uh, you said, be patient and, and <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, I was a little... I have been patient. Oh, you have been very patient. I was a bit slow. I apologize for that. And as I said in the intro, you're a friend of uh, Rich, who's been on the on the podcast before. And people will remember Rich because Rich is the person that got the red 944 for his 16th birthday. So everyone will remember that part of, part of the story. But he's also a Boxster owner, which we'll talk about the Boxster Association. So let's, let's, start, let's start at the beginning, Dan. Let's, let's get straight into it because we've got a couple of cars to talk about. And I think you've got a good story for the listeners today. Um, let's talk about where I like, always like to start where it all began. You know what I mean? Like for me, uh, Porsche didn't really happen until later in life. Uh, I lived in a country town. I didn't see that many. You know, I used to see some cars on a weekend when I used to sit by the road and, and watch them you know, on their way to the city, but I never used to see many Porsches. How did it all start from you? Did anyone in your family or neighbors have a Porsche or was it something that happened much later in life? I It started later in life for me around um, when I started to go to college, you know, when I was freshman year in college is when I really started to become aware of the brand. Um you know, I, I grew up in the days that a lot of people talk about the posters on the wall and risky business and, you know, those types of things. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, I, I, you know, my, my, uh, my video or, or movie reference might be Scarface when Tony goes into the Porsche dealer and he buys the 928. Um, but I was pretty young then. I, I truly didn't become aware of the brand until uh, my roommate in college, Steve, and his brother, David, uh, their dad had a 928. In fact, he had two of them. He had a black one and a red one. I think his first one was manual, and then he ended up switching to the automatic. Um, but that's really where I was introduced to the brand. Um, you know, Dave, I, I remember Dave put in his yearbook something like, I'm going to get it wrong, Dave, so apologies, something like 150.928.78. And I, I think that was referencing his, the speed he went on the 78 local highway Um in his dad's 928 and he didn't tell his father what it, <laughs> he didn't tell his father what it meant until you know much later in life but uh, that was that was really my first introduction to the brand i like the scarface reference no one's ever said that before that's a good reference actually uh go back and watch that clip it's a great yeah clip. i will actually i remember i remember it i vaguely remember it but that's that's a really cool reference to have um because most people say other movies that are more you know more well known i guess or more sort of popular yeah, of course, he goes in for a 928, and I think Porsche was probably, you know, with Risky Business and Scarface, probably pushing the 928 at the time and trying to get sales, and so putting it in the movies where they could. But then he walks outside, and there's uh, about 4930s outside. You know, it's just a beautiful background when you see him come out of the dealership. 
pretty cool. Yeah, and who would have out. thought? Who would have thought that the nine twenty eight would fetch such a high value? That one from Risky Business just sold, didn't it? I think for a uh, crazy, crazy amount of money just recently. Yeah, it was, it was over a million. I know that. I'm not a sure million dollars for a nine twenty eight. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's got you know, it is Risky Business's. It is the car, but still, it's a lot of money for a nine twenty eight. Sure. It is. So what else then? So you you, you know. That's that's the memory of the nine two eight. You know, you have <clears throat> you start getting your you get your license. You know, you're growing up. What are those cars that you that you wanted to get into or you got into that you thought at the time were were very special? How did it all start your car journey? Well, I mean, all the way back from my childhood, I had a fun childhood. I had a, a bunch of guys in the neighborhood. We lived on a neighborhood that was kind of a P shape. So. The oval of the P was kind of our racetrack, about a half mile racetrack that we would <laughs> zoom around in, in our uh, mini bikes and go karts and snowmobiles. And surrounding us was apple orchards and um, a drive-in movie theater. So we had the moguls, we had the apple orchards to tool through, and so lots of fun stuff like that. Um, my dad, you know, he always liked to surprise us, so he came home one Christmas with a go kart. Um, and that go-kart was, you know, it was pretty fast. I think it had a 5.5 Briggs and Stratton engine in it. Um, so, you know, it wasn't that fast, but for a kid, it was fast. Uh, we painted it speed yellow. I had the matching helmet with the black stripe. <laughs> um, we had a lot of fun with that. And then he brought, bought me a, a 90 CC Kawasaki when I was about 13 years oh, old. Wow. Cool. So, you know, I, I, I took his license plate, threw it on there, drove around town, um, you know, got in a little bit of trouble and eventually put that into a rock wall. So that was the end of that bike. Um, but, you know, dad was always doing fun stuff like that. And then, you know, he'd bring home toys for himself, too. And and there was a few fun ones along the way. Uh, I remember a Chevy Nova three-speed manual transmission. Um, he had a couple of Nissan 240Zs. Okay. Uh, nice. Then he had an early 80s Camaro. And that was a white Camaro with a chocolate brown leather interior. And that was the first car I drove just to drive, you know, like got in the car, just took a journey. Um, you've heard Rich and other New York area guys talk about Storm King Highway and yeah. going over the going over that mountain road up by Mar Bear Mountain. I would just zoom over there, go, you know, go from one end to that highway and back just to have fun. Um, of course, while my dad was away or at work and didn't know I had the car <laughs> doing that. <laughs> doing that um but that's you know that's our local version of uh, you know the the blue ridge mountains and the tail of the dragon kind of right, you know that right. that's as close as we get to it in our area of the region um but you know we had fun like that and you know he, so he brought home a few cool cars um my mom actually had a mustang and it was early 80s mustang bit of a shitbox but it was manual and okay. I wanted to drive a manual car. And, and my father said, OK, if you want to do that and you get your license, you've got to take your test in this car. Um, and so I did that. A uh, bit of a shout out to my brother in law. He was he was dating my sister at the time, but he had a he had a uh, Mercury Bobcat. Um, again, a shitbox, but it had a manual stick. So he, he helped <laughs> me, taught me how to drive that. Uh, we would go to like a local parking lot late at night probably with a six pack of beer and just, you know, he'd let me <laughs> and let he'd drive let, a manual. Let exactly. Drive a yeah. He'd yeah. let me grind those gears until it was gone. Um, I actually went to school. I, I went to Syracuse university and if you know them, they're, uh, they're the orange men. Um, and so as a joke, the summer before I went to school, my dad bought me a bright orange Ford Pacer. Okay. Um, it, you know, that, that hideous bubble car. Um, but it was a, a summer car and it was a lot of fun and it was a good joke. Um, to make up for it, he bought me a 71 Mercury Cougar XR7 convertible with a 351 Cleveland engine that, uh, that I ended up taking up to school. Beast of a beast of a car, you know, in a straight line, uh, terrible handling and, and probably the worst car to take up in the snow. <laughs> um, but you know, Oh, again, it got that gave me kind of the convertible bug um, and made me start to, you know, when I started to look for my own car to think about a convertible and what I might want to get um, right out of school, I moved into New York City. So, you know, that I, I didn't even want a car at that point. Um, so it wasn't until uh, a bit later I was married and, um, you know, got got a car, moved out to Long Island. 
Um, and that, and that, you know, I've had a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for since then till now. I have one still now. Right. Um, so I've always had that kind of utility vehicle, um, you know, available to me, and I, and I and I use that. My so, Porsche purchase, and sorry, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, so you're living in you're living in New York. You you moved to New York. Um, I've had a few people from New York on the show, as you know, who have actual 997s in New York. Yep. Drive them, park them. Very expensive parking in New York. I know I know all about that. I've heard all about that now. Um, so when do you when do you decide though? What is that What is that tipping point for you where you think, okay, I I want a Porsche. Do you walk past a dealer and see it? someone in your company is, is, is driving one. What, what is the thing that makes you think, okay, I'm going to start either saving, get finance, or just, I'm going to get one. What, what's the deciding thing for you? Yeah. You know, like I said, I was, I was looking, I was thinking I wanted a convertible. I wanted that, you know, that second car to be a convertible. Um, and at the time, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, actually got a 944. Okay. It was a 2002 944. And my brother-in-law, just FYI, is Gundo from the Gundo hack. Um, oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, this is the, this is the, okay. Because I remember Rich was mentioning to me about Gundo hack and yep. he knows, and he didn't want to mention who it was. So that's who so, it is. <laughs> yeah, so we, but he, he's my brother-in-law. He, he um, you know, so... So, you know, and obviously uh, we call him Gundo and, and that's actually, you know, what people call him in our poor circles, Gundo. So very cool. Um, and, you know, so he's my brother-in-law. He picks up a 944 in 2002. Um, and yeah, I'm starting to like get serious about pulling the trigger here. I'm shopping around. And at the time, you know, obviously the, the, the Boxster came out in 96 and 97. Yeah. Um, and, you know, about the same time the Audi TT Roadster came out, uh, yeah. that uh, it came out in 98 and the convertible uh, Roadster version came out in 99. Um, so uh, it, where I live, uh, there, there's a Porsche dealer and a Audi dealer side by side. So I said, OK, uh, I'm going to go and dr- test drive them back to back and okay. see what I'm interested in. And it was an awesome, awesome experience to be able to do that, right? So I took the, I took the Boxster out first. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a, a you know, a, a circle that they let you drive on and, and they encourage you to get on it a little bit and have a little fun with it. Um, and so I, I, I did that. I took that car out and it was awesome. Um, sorry, really, Dan, was, what, sorry, Dan, yeah. what year is this? What year is this so, you test? When oh, they so just when they were launched, or a little bit after? No, no. So I I bought mine certified pre-owned from the Porsche dealer. Uh, so this was two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. Um, so it's only four. Y- and you know, I <clears throat> I remember going to a motor show and seeing that Audi TT when it first came out, and it was yeah. it was special, right? At the time, I mean, you look at it now, it you know, yeah. it's kind of attractive and kind of odd at the same time in in some angles, but. It was really special, wasn't it? And that Boxster as well. The Boxster, and I think this is what people forget, how, how important and how special that Boxster was. When it came out, I don't think you could buy one new. I don't think they were, I think they were sold out, right? People were just buying them up because they were so special. Um, it, it yeah, was I had a, to, they were both important cars, weren't they? Really important cars for both brands. Absolutely. And they made an impression on me. I was doing the same thing, obviously going to the car shows and, and sitting in them. And, and uh, you know, I remember the, the Audi TT, one of the interiors was that special uh, interior that looked like a baseball glove, had this yeah. stitching uh, yeah. like a baseball glove. Um, and, and so, you know, I, was, I wasn't sold on Porsche yet, um, but it, it only took one test drive to sell me. I, I, I went from that directly into the Audi TT. Um, I took the same exact route, uh, leaned on it just as, as hard as I did the Boxster, and it felt like I was driving in a bathtub. Um, it was slower. It, it was not nowhere as near as nimble. Um, didn't have the same kind of uh, uh, feeling going into the corners. Uh, right. the, actual, the, the tail actually uh, got loose on me a couple of times. Um, it just didn't hold the road the way the Boxster did. Um, and so it was an easy decision. I went, I went right back to the Porsche dealer and bought the car right then that day. Um, and it was awesome. You know, that was, uh, it was great to be able to do that. And it really kind of sealed the deal for him. And the, and the, and the special thing the listeners should know is you still have this car. You still own this car, correct? 
I do own this car. Yeah. So, so, so tell the listeners exactly what you bought. It was a, at the time it was about four years old. Tell them exactly what it was, Dan, and, and the options that it came with, and 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 all about it. Sure. It was so. Um, the salesman did a pretty good job on me. I actually went there looking for a manual um, and ended up buying a 1997 Boxster uh, in Arctic silver um, with the Boxster full leather interior. It does mm-hmm. have the t- it does have the Tiptronic transmission. Okay. Um, and it came with um, uh, you know the uh, I forget what the package was called, but the uh, one of the upgraded packages that um, you know gave you the 17 inch wheels over the 16, uh, gave you the wind deflector, this special sound package, the alarm, you know AM FM cassette, that kind of thing. Um, so it was you know the the, the Tiptronic was about. 3,200 over the ba- the manual um, at the time. And so, you know, I think the sticker was somewhere in the high 40s, new. Um, and I bought it, as I said, certified pre-owned for about 38,000 at the time. Um, so it's still a lot of money at the time, isn't it? It's not a, it's yeah. not a cheap car, that's for sure. It's a big purchase. Yeah, it was my, um, you know, it, it was my biggest purchase to date. Um, yeah. And, but, but it really wasn't the money at that point. You know, I was, uh, I, I was doing fine in my career and, and, you know, it was the car, it was the car I wanted, you know, after looking around and, and, uh, you know, test driving, like I said, and it, it just, you know, it, it, it was a car I wanted. I enjoyed it. It's still, uh, you know, as we know, we have, I have another Porsche I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but it still puts a smile on my face. Um, you know, it's still, uh, it's still a special car. And I think it's finally getting, um, you know, some of the recognition it deserves with its 25th anniversary uh, just happening last year. And the price is finally starting to yeah. tick, tick back yeah, the up. Prices are going back um, up, aren't they? And that that, 25th, yeah. that that anniversary edition, I think they did. A, I think they did a good job on it. I know people have criticized it, but I actually think they've done a pretty good job on that car. Um, and Eric, who's been on the yeah. other stories before, Eric actually bought one. One of the previous owner stories guys actually bought one, and it's a beautiful guy. He's got the black one with the red interior, and it looks it looks fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But you know, like you, you bought this car twenty years ago, right? It's it's twenty years ago. It's two thousand and two. Twenty years ago. Was there any period of time during those twenty years where you thought maybe I should sell this car? Maybe I should get something else. What makes you keep a car that, that car for that long? What was it about the Boxster that that made you hold on to it? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. Number, I guess, first of all, um, it opened me up to a community of Porsche owners that I, you know, wasn't expecting. I didn't know that would come as part of the package. Um, you know, uh, I, I met I met people like like Rich, um, and there's a whole list of people that are part of what what we referred to as the Tri-State Boxster League, the TSBL group. Um, and it's just a group of, of Boxster enthusiasts that get together. We work on our cars. You know, we do simple things. Some guys do some major services. But, you know, for me, it was all, you know, just about um, spending the day. My brother-in-law, Gundo, he's got a nice three-car garage where we, we would all meet up and uh, work on our cars, oil changes, brake pads, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, different mods that people would do. Um, but it was that community, you know, getting together with that, with that group. Um, on our own, not through like Porsche Club of America, we would do events, we would travel, um, go up to like Lake George or, or Lake Placid, take long drives and overnight stays and, and just, you know, get together as a group and talk about our cars and work on our cars. Um, just a lot of fun um, and, and just a great group of people to be around. Yeah, the community is something you sort of, you buy into the car and you, you sort of don't think about the community until you've got one and then you see the community and you and you know you're part of it and you realize how great it is and how this you know it really does keep you in there doesn't it because rich had the same thing as you didn't he and i don't want to talk about rich too much as your story but rich had his boxster for a long time as well he kept his for quite some time before he bought his 997 yeah absolutely and and um at the same time you know um, my brother-in-law he went from the 944 i think he had a 944 turbo in between but in 2004, he ended up getting a Boxster and then and then a Boxster S in 05. And my brother, Jeff, uh, he got in 2003, he got a Boxster S. So, you know, now we've got uh, my family involved, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and the team involved. And, and you know, that went on for, for many years. Um, 
and doing things like BRBS, you know, the Blue Ridge Boxer Summit and going down to the Blue Ridge Mountains and being part of that community and, yeah, and doing that run w- was a lot of fun. Real, lot, you know, great fun. And I probably skipped over it. And, and most people listening will, will realize the importance of the Gundo hack, right? Most people should realize if they're a Porsche, if they're into Porsche, they should realize how important that was. And of course, you know, you've got Darren Fister who started it after Gundo, right? Started it after your brother-in-law. I think it came next and it's slightly right. different. But it is a very important mod. Do you know what I mean? To be, to be responsible for that and to have that, it's a, it's a pretty big thing. I mean, it's quite a special thing to do, especially knowing how s- simple it is, but then how clever it was at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, you know, he's a, he's a tinkerer. He'll, he's got, as I said, he's got that three-car garage and there's always a project going on in one of the bays, <laughs> um, which, is, which is awesome. Uh, you know, if you get yourself stuck on something or whatever, you can go up there and, and, and he'll help you through it. But he's got his own story, and he's a great story. So maybe down the line you could get him on. Yeah, um, yeah. And, but he because he's got a whole slew of cars that I didn't even uh, you know didn't even touch on. Um, but you know, to your question about the Boxster and 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 you know keeping it for so long, uh, you know, Gundo eventually went up to a to a Carrera S cab. My brother went up to a Carrera 4S cab, both 997.1s. Um, and I'm still in my boxer, so, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a little tough to keep up with the guys yeah, we'll, sometimes. We'll get to the next one. We'll get to the next one. But when you bought the Boxster, though, you, you, you did mention, you know, you, went in, you wanted a manual. What was the thing that made the dealer made you – what was the deciding factor that you thought, okay, I'm okay with the tip? Yeah, you know, um, the, the, I put a little bit too much emphasis on living in a crowded place like Long Island. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I work in Manhattan. I live on Long Island. Um, it's a it's a crowded uh, environment. Um, I put a little bit maybe too much emphasis on that. Um, I will tell you, though, I, I know the Tiptronic, you know, has been, uh, uh, you know, been crushed in the press and, and you know, the, in the community. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed driving it. I enjoyed the. Um, it, yeah, sure. It's nowhere near the PDK. Um, but I still get a thrill driving that car. I still enjoy, you know, I, I very rarely keep it in automatic. At least I'm changing the gears with the, with the buttons myself yep. and, uh, and driving it that way. Um, so I, I still get some, I still get that, that kind of visceral feel out of it and that enjoyment. Um, and it's a hell of a car, you know, it, it's really is a hell of a car. And, and, uh, you know, that's why I'm not getting rid of it. I'm a bit sentimental, uh, about the car, but also I'm fortunate enough to not have to get rid of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I can hold on to it and I'm going to, you know, for the foreseeable future, uh, that's the plan. Um, you know, yeah. we'll have both options. I think that's a good, that's a good way to be. I mean, look, there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that, that, you know, a lot of people who don't have a Porsche yet, you know, that they're, they're, they're searching for one and they're listening to the podcast to get information and, and things like that about what to buy. If someone was looking at buying a, a Boxster, was it, what do you think they should look out for? Apart from the obvious, you know, engine things that we've all heard over and over again, is there anything you think someone should look out for? Is it a, you think it's a good starter car or do you think now having a 911, they should get straight into a 996? What do you think in, in, from your experience, from your ownership experience of now having a, a Boxster and a 911, which we'll get into, what do you think is the, the best way to go? Yeah, I, I will tell you, they, um, well, first of all, drive the cars, you know, go test drive them and see what, see what feels right to you. Um, there isn't a wrong answer, but they do feel very different. Um, you know, the, the Boxster is much lighter. It's a mid engine car. Um, it, 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 you know, is a, is a blast to drive. As I said, puts a smile on my face. It has been bulletproof for me. I've got the original 2.5 liter, 97. Oh, right. Um, they, you know, that, that didn't last more than a couple of years, right. No. Before they went, before they went to the, the larger engine. And, but and, that's the collector know. one now, isn't it? Sorry, exactly. Dan, that's the one that's <laughs> going to be the collector one because it was it only a short period. We know what Porsche do. Any Porsche yeah. that's only a short period is always, you know, the sought after one in years to come. But it's, you know, I obviously I've kept it well-maintained. Um, it has, I've had almost no issues with it. Um, you know, did a couple of, I, I'm not a big mod guy, you know, but, you know, a couple of small things just to, uh, you know, clear side markers and, and change the taillights and did a rear speaker kit. A um, couple of things like that. There's a couple of known problems with it, like the ignition switch fails. 
easy fix. Did that myself. Right. Um, you know, change out the serpentine belt and the brake pads, all the regular maintenance stuff that you have to do. Um, you know, the roof cables, uh, ha- had to replace those. Those start to slip and your roof starts to not, you know, work correctly. Um, but if you're, if you're handy at all, they're really not hard things to do. And there's a ton of documentation on it available online. Um, and a lot of guys that are willing to help you, guys and gals, I should say, because we had women in our TSBL group as well. Um, and, you know, th- it is, it is uh, you know, just a, an awesome car. Um, and, you know, got help from, you know, not just Gundo, but guys like Maurice, who uh, he's known as Topster in the circles. Uh, you know, he's part of our group and, and he's, he's the top guy. He's the one that knows how to change the top and do the cables and do the yeah. work. A uh, very good friend, and he lives in the next town over from me. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, again, building Fantastic. that community. And, yeah. And, 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 but, but, you know, I know we're going to get into the 911, but to answer your question about which one to go with, they're obviously very different cars. They're very different budgets. Um, as I said, I don't think there's a wrong answer. It just get into, you know, if you're thinking about getting into Porsche, um, pick the one that fits your budget, fits your lifestyle, and just go for it. It's it's just an awesome experience. Yeah, so. good advice. Good advice. So yours has got the um the plastic back window or the glass. Is it O two the glass or the plastic? I can never remember when it switched over. O two O three. Mine, yeah, it switched over later. I, mine ninety seven still has the original plastic window, and it's oh, right. in awesome shape. I, I've got to tell you, my paint my paint looks great. Sure, I've got I've got rock chips and stuff. Um, you know, I was just doing some work at, with with Maurice, and and uh, his neighbor came over. He's a old dealer from one of the Long Island, um, you know, he was a salesperson at one of the Long Island dealerships. He's looking at my car. He said he couldn't believe it, that it didn't have a respray or, you know, it, it, just a, just amazing condition. And I get that reaction wherever I go. Um, it, you know, it's an awesome looking car. Sorry, Dan, how many miles does it have on it now? You boxed it. Yeah, it's only got about 40,000 miles on it. Wow, so, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, it should be driving it more. Yes, I know. No, um, but I drive it when I can and, uh, and enjoy the hell out of it when I do. So fantastic. Fantastic. So you got the Boxster, um, and it's not that long ago, is it? Is it less than a year ago? Less than a year ago, you're obviously getting itchy. You're thinking, okay, I want to get a 911. How did it come yeah. about? How did you, what made you think that you wanted the 911 and how did you, what did you start looking for? What did you start searching for? Was the 997 what you had on your had in your mind, or were you looking at 991s? How did it all start? Yeah, so um, the thought isn't that new. I've been t- thinking about a 911 for well, probably 15 years, um, and came close a couple of times during the journey. I was I was uh, interested. I thought in a Targa, um, and you know had gone out and test drove a couple of those at dealerships. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the more current, um, uh, you know, version and, you know, really didn't like the buffeting, uh, effect that was happening with the target windows open. Um, uh, and, you know, so I didn't enjoy that, I, but I, I came really close. I drove four hours with my brother to go pick up a target, did the test drive, was ready to pull the trigger. This was a private sale. Um, and you know, the guy at the time said, well, I was just offered a thousand dollars more. And I said, but I'm here, I've got cash in my hand. And he says, yeah, well, um, I got, you know, got a thousand dollars more. And it reminded me of one of the stories you told where I just felt like the guy didn't want to sell it to me for whatever reason. Um, whether it was, he didn't want to sell it at all. or didn't want to sell it to me. I wasn't sure. Um, but I ended up leaving without the car that day, quite disappointed. And it wasn't the thousand dollars I was willing to. I even said I'll match the thousand, I'll match the price. And he said, No, 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 you've got to beat it. You've got to, you've got to go much higher. Otherwise, I'm going with the other sale. So he clearly didn't want to sell it. So, um, so I walked away from that, and then uh, I seriously started looking. Um, Pre-COVID, it was a, it was about two and a half, three years ago. I seriously started looking. Um, and was looking for a very specific spec. I was looking for the 997.2. Um, I was looking for white. I was looking for a 4S. I wanted um, I wanted Sport Chrono. 
Um, you know, there was, I wanted manual this time. I wasn't going to make that, uh, yep. that decision again. I wasn't going to get talked out of it. I absolutely wanted a manual. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I was looking, uh, everywhere. I was looking private sales. I was looking, uh, with dealers. I was on the auction sites, um, and really scouring around and again, came close a couple of times, um, almost settled a couple of times for a car that wasn't the right color or, you know, was was a, a, a 997.1. Not that there's anything wrong with those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it wasn't the one I was searching for, right? And you wanted the dot two. You wanted I the wanted dot the two. dot two. Um, I wanted the 4S. As, as you know, my as I said, my brother's got the 4S. Um, and, you know, I, I just, it was a very specific build. And I, I was patient. You know, I'd already waited almost 20 years. Why not be patient and find the right car? So how um, long was the search, Dan? So you said you started a few years back. Well, so I, I started to seriously think about it almost uh, almost three years ago. I'd say I earnestly got into really looking um, about two years ago. Um, as I said, came close, uh, bidded on a few things on the auction sites, didn't win those because they weren't the, the car. So I wasn't willing to push the envelope. Um, you know, I stuck within my budget and lost out on a, on a couple. And, you know, of course, over this, over the last particularly year, I'm seeing the prices tick up. <laughs> I was going to say that <laughs> by the time you started, you know, in that one year is probably the worst year with, for the prices, isn't it? They're, they're going up very rapidly. Yeah, they, they were. Um, I was watching them go up and, and then feeling a little bit of pressure that I had to make a decision soon. Okay. And, um, you know, I've, I've, it's now about seven months that I've, I've owned the car. So, um, the car finally came up, it came up listed on the P car auction site. Okay. How did you, how do you feel? And I know you've already done it, but how did you feel at the time before you made the purchase? Have you ever, how do you feel about buying from an auction site such as P car market or bring a trailer? Was it something that you were a little bit hesitant about or was it something you felt quite comfortable with? Honestly, I wasn't hesitant at all. Um, my, you know, I, I know people that have bought on auction sites. Um, I would say mostly good experiences. I think, you know, one of the uh, 944s my brother-in-law bought was early on Bring a Trailer. I, you know, obviously that was back in 2002, 2003, I believe. Right. Um, right. So, you know, I don't think things were run the same way back then. Um, he took a bit of a risk on one and, and lost out. Um, but I'd say in general, I was not nervous about it at all. I figured, you know, sites like PCAR and Bring a Trailer, they have a reputation um, that they need to maintain. Um, you know, I was in contact with the owner through the P, through PCAR and was able to message questions. Okay. So you, so you start looking, you start looking, you're looking, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you, you search out, bring a trailer. You see if there's anything on there. You found this one on P car market. What was it about this one on P car market? Was it exactly what you wanted? Michael, it couldn't have been any closer. It was my dream spec. And then some, um, that was, that was listed, you know, for this car. Uh, I got, I actually got pretty nervous when I first saw the listing and I'm reading through it because I'm like, Holy cow, this is a one. This is, yeah. I've got a bit on this car. <laughs> and I, now I'm realizing, <laughs> you know, I've got to actually do this. Yeah. I want you to tell the listeners very shortly what you bought, but I've, I've seen the listing that you sent me last night. Um, and I looked at the listing and, you know, it's a tough one because if that's what you're looking for, like you've just told me that was what you're after. It must have been hard to know where to stop because I noticed in the bidding, there's quite a few people bidding against you, right? You had to like, you had to really go in there and buy it. You know what I mean? There was, it, it was competitive. It looked like it was a competitive auction when you were, when you were actually going ahead. How did you feel when you're in the middle of that <laughs> before you bought it? I mean, obviously you've spoken to the owner. You've, you've, you know, you haven't got an inspection done, right? I guess you just no. ask the owner whatever questions you need to ask and, and find out and, and check all the records. Everything was in order, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know, I, I did not get an inspection done. Um, a few things that I was counting on, right? Number one was the reputation of, of PCAR itself. Uh, number two is uh, the communication with the owner and him being an honest man. 
which, by the way, you know, I talk about him a bit later if you want, but a very great guy uh, was just super to deal with um, even after the auction, uh, you know, and, and dealing with him on, on getting uh, getting the car and the documentation and all that super guy to deal with. Um, and, you know, and, and honestly, some of the questions that the rest of the community was asking um, yeah. and, you know, and digging into the car a bit and getting the facts and the documentation that's shared on the listing um, and the images that are shared on the listing, uh, all of that, you know, made me feel comfortable to to just go for it. It's a good listing. I have to admit, it's it's a it's a it's a listing that makes you feel confident. When I when I w- looked through it, it was like, yeah, this is this is a good listing. It's a and it's a beautiful <laughs> car. You know, I'm a fan of the 997, especially the Dot yeah. Two as well. And in Carrara white and in the spec that it is with the full leather. But I, anyway, I'm not going to give it away too much. Tell the listeners exactly what you bought, and then I want to go back to the process of when you like when you push the button. But what did you actually buy from Pika Market? Yeah, so um, it is a 2010. Uh, Porsche 997.2 Carrera 4S. Um, it is a got a six-speed manual transmission uh, with a short shifter. It's got the sport exhaust system. It's got the full carbon package um, interior, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, sport chrono package. Uh, it's got 19-inch Carrera S wheels, painted black. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the with the Porsche crest in the middle, um, I did end up changing the Bridgestone Potenza tires uh, to the Pilot Sport 4S. Um, it did come with uh, five millimeter spacers. Um, it came with an upgraded suspension to, to the Bilstein coilovers, okay, uh, which are which are actually built to work with the PASM system. Yep. Um, it's got the adaptive sport seats. Um, uh, heated front seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, it's got the um, multifunction steering wheel, which I'm actually not a fan of. Um, we can talk about that. Yeah, but it looks um, pretty good, though. I'm looking at the pictures of the listing now. It looks pretty good, though. I don't mind the multifunction. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and and so, you know, just the – oh, and it had a, had a uh, ECU tune on it, um, a Cobb tune um, already applied. Did you, um, what did you think of the tune? Was that something that you, when you're looking at the listing and you saw that it had the Cobb tune? I know a lot of people do the Cobb tune, don't they? I, I have heard about it before. Was that something you were keen had, on or you weren't so sure about? It was something I was indifferent about, to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 I guess it's great that it has it. it, it you know, uh, people pay a lot of money to put the Cobb tune on. Yeah. Um, it's obviously outside of warranty, so no issues, uh, concerns about that. Um, but honestly, I don't know what the car felt like before the tune. <laughs> so it, so I, I have no point of reference to know yeah. what the car feels like after the tune. Um, it's, you know, obviously an inc- incredible car to drive. Um, but I, I, I can't tell you one way or the other whether the Cobb tune was worth the money or, or uh, is a good thing or not. Is it an easy reversal at Cobb Tune, Dan? Do you know? Is it an easy thing to take off if you don't want it? I believe it's it's pretty straightforward to remove it and put it back to factory spec. Um, so you know that I, I unless someone gives me a, a you know a really a good reason to do that, I'll probably leave it alone. Yeah, there's no um, point. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how it's got your car's also got the carbon door sills as well, hasn't it? Which looks very cool. It has the carbon door sills. The, <laughs> Big fan the of lighted, the carbon door sills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lighted door sills. Um, you know, it's funny. It is, there's only two things that I would do on the car right now. Um, you're talking about the car sills, you know, and it's funny that Steve always talks about, you know, getting in and out of the car and not scuffing the sills. Yeah. And, and that's a pet peeve. Um, it's a pet peeve of mine as well. And, and the interior sills are pretty scuffed up. Um, yeah. So... So I'll probably change those out, uh, you know, uh, this summer. I'll, I'll, I'll address that. And then, as I said, the um, the multifunction steering wheel. I, I just I don't envision myself using the functionality on the steering wheel. Uh, I, and so to me, it, it kind of is not a clean look. It's a bit cluttered. I'd rather go with the all black version of that steering wheel, get rid of the chrome highlights and just mm. go all black. I guess for you, though, it's quite an easy switch over for the steering wheel because you've got the round steering, the round airbag anyway. So the airbag's always the most expensive Correct. part, right? So you can just get the sports wheel, 
Um, you've got the airbag already, so there's always even like used ones available quite quite cheap uh, on the market. I've noticed on Rainlist and places like that. The door sills, I recommend if you're going to do the inner door sill, the plastic ones, do them in leather. And then you have to be even more careful, Dan, <laughs> getting in and out of your car. I put mine on at Christmas, and I'm telling you now, they're already scuffed. It's very, very difficult not to um, get your foot on them occasionally, and, and they do mark very, very easily. But you can sort of clean them back up, but they do mark very easily. All right. I'll note that. Thank you. When you're in the process, the process of PCAR market, I want to go back to that process because I know a lot of people are listening and saying, I want to hear about this process, people who haven't bought from it before. So you, you, you're sitting at home. I'm guessing hopefully it's not an evening and you're not, you don't have a beer or a glass of wine there and you're sort of going a little bit, you know, emotion takes over and you just sort of keep bidding and keep bidding. Once you've done the final bid and you've won it, what was the feeling? What, what was going through your head? Yeah. Um, so just, to, just a, a note on the process. Um, it, was, it was the middle of the day. I think it was a, a, like a 3 p.m. Okay. end of the That's auction. Um, it was, uh, I was actually out running about town with my wife. Um, and I, I pre-warned her. I said, half an hour before the end of the auction, I'm going to have to put, you know, put myself in a parking lot, <laughs> sit still, and watch the end of this auction and see where we net out, um, which is what, exactly what we did. And, you know, there were moments in time, of course, uh, the last several days of the auction where I was the lead bidder. Um, and, you know, then a guy would outbid me and, and back and forth, back and forth. And, of course, you know, with all of these auctions, there's a flurry of activity towards the very end. Um, and one by one, guys dropped out and said, good luck, Dano, or, you know, good luck, you know, who's ever still left. Because um, yeah. every time someone bid... I immediately tried to bid again. You know, I wanted people to know I was serious. I was in it. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to bid again. So um, I tried to do that where, where I could, where I was paying attention and, and could do that as quickly as possible. Um, I did have a ceiling. I had, you know, I don't mind telling people what I paid for it because it's up on the auction site and people can go look at the car. I paid 72 five and my ceiling that I agree, you know, agreed with my wife and talked about with and convinced myself, my ceiling was going to be 72. And I said, if it hits 72, I'm out. And of course it did. <laughs> How was that? Can I interrupt for a second? How was that yeah, price but, at the time? Seven months ago, right? Seven or eight months ago. Yep. The price of 997.24 S's. Is that about the market value? Was that about the right price? Because it's a low mileage I, car, I, right? It only had 40 odd thousand miles, didn't it? Yeah, it, 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 you know, it wasn't a cream puff. It was used, um, but it was, like you said, about 45,000 miles. Um, and I felt that that price was, re was actually low. Um, mm. I had been shopping, as you know, looking around and, and seeing comparatives. Um, since then, I've talked to a couple of, uh, you know, private dealers, and, and they think I got a, a real bargain on the car. Um, they would have listed it much higher. But that said... There's, you've got to factor in the commission, right? Yep. You're paying a commission to PCAR. Uh, this was a California car. So I knew I had to factor in shipping cross country. Um, and then of course you've got the, you know, the New York tax, the, you know, to register the car and everything. So, which is going to be on any car, but those, those two things, the shipping and the, and the commission, I had to put on top of the car and factor them into right. my top of my bid. What does PCAR market charge? Can I ask? I can't remember. I believe it was a 5% commission on the 5%. sale. 5%. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a max to it, but my 5% was below uh, the max. I mean, I saw the price. I don't know the prices of 0.2s in the US, but knowing it's a manual, knowing it's really highly optioned, um, good color, good wheels, you know, um, it seems... It seemed good value to me when I saw that price, and I don't know what the prices are, but it seemed I sort of converted it. When, obviously, when I convert it to Australian dollars, it's very, very cheap because um, that would be 190000 Australian dollars or 200000 Australian dollars. So what's that, about 120000 US easy for a 4S manual in that condition. Right. Right. Um, so compared to Australia, it's a lot cheaper. But it's a beautiful car, and I think people, if they can go and have a look at the P-Car market and have a look at that listing, they should have a look because it's a really... Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description of the podcast if you if you if you're okay with that, so people can go and have a look at it. But it's a great it's a great looking car, great images. Yeah, do it. Um, like I said, it's up there for the public to see it, so so no hiding it. It's you know you put the lot number up there and they'll be able to find it. Um, thank you. I you know I I was uh, as I said extremely excited when it came listed. 
Um, you know, I got to that 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 seventy two thousand dollar top of my bid, <laughs> and and if you look at the history, someone went seventy two two fifty. Yeah, I, I did see. <laughs> I did watch <laughs> look at that today. Yeah, and I, I said, was seeing that. Someone I said, was after it. Yeah. <laughs> I said no way. I turned to my wife. I said, "You got five hundred bucks? I can borrow." <laughs> <laughs> And she was a sport and said, absolutely, go for it. You can't walk away now. And, and I, I, I don't know what would have happened, but I honestly thought, you know, this is it. This, I'm going to give it one more bid and see yeah. what happens. And it, and, it, and it happened. It worked. You know, I got it for the 72.5. Uh-huh. I, I couldn't believe it. Good decision. Um, Good decision. Because like you said, that was what you wanted. You were searching for quite a while, a couple of years, you know. You, you've got the yeah. good one. The market's shifted even more. The prices have gone up even more since then. But how was it? Tell me the story because you said you had to organize the shipping. It was in California, right? So the car right. gets shipped back to New York, back to Long Island. Yeah. And it comes um, off the truck. What's the feeling? Your first nine <laughs> eleven. So um, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see um, in my stories uh, on the top, there's a 997.2 story. And it's got all of my stories since, um, you know, since I got the car. And I think the first couple are the, or the car coming off the coming off the truck. I, th- I think the very first one is actually the shipper picking it up in California and driving down the road with it. The rig was so big, you couldn't get down this down my street. Couldn't get <laughs> couldn't get to my house. So the guy pulls over on a pretty busy highway. Like he, there wasn't even like a nearby parking lot. Right. He could fit into there was a there's a uh, railroad bridge. He couldn't get under. I ended up having to walk and meet this guy um, on a on a side of a busy road, and you know he, it's on the top level of a multi level truck, enclosed, and you know he's taking it out. It's the last car he's got on the truck before he starts collecting cars to head back to California. <laughs> and I'm just you know he 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 starts it up and backs it up onto that uh, that ramp that sticks yeah. off the back of the truck and. You know, I'm looking at this thing come out and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. And and I'm like thinking, oh, my God, please don't fall off. The truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just incredible. And my, you know, my wife walked with me to go to go see the car and, and get that um, and, you know, film me getting in it and actually starting the car up and driving it for the first time from the side of this busy highway, just a few blocks to my home. You had to drive back to your house. Yeah, I had to get it back to my driveway and get it there. And nervous? It was, oh, it was <laughs> absolutely nerve wracking. Um, you know, unrelated, there were sirens going off, and and I think an ambulance and stuff. I'm just like, it was chaos. It was chaos. <laughs> Uh, let me, but, Dan, let me tell the listeners your Instagram so they can go and look yeah, at that. Sure. It's, um, Dan's Instagram is at Dano underscore NY, at Dano underscore NY. So go and have a look at Dan's Instagram. Give him a follow. Tell him you heard his story on Porsche Cooled. And uh, you'll see all those uh, few images of the cars and also on, on the stories, as Dan said, he has the, uh, the stories there with the delivery of the car. So you got the car. You drive it back around to your house. What's the first thing you do? The first thing I would do is check it. I would look around every single corner of the car to make sure it's perfect. <laughs> what did you yeah, do? Yeah, I know. Absolutely. I did that um, inside and out, just looked it over. Um, it was, you know, you can see from the images on PCAR, there were a couple of uh, stone ships um, just in the film. Um, they claimed that it didn't touch the paint. It just uh, scuffed the film. And that was accurate. You know, they, they were, you know, very honest and upfront about that. The paint was not damaged. Um, and, you know, it just, it was actually more beautiful in person than it, than it even is, you know, in the images. Um, I was just extremely happy. Uh, of course, this was now dusk. It was getting dark, um, very hard to see. And, and, you know, I had to, uh, uh, you know, just kind of put it to bed for the night and, and try to sleep until I could uh, get up the next morning and take it for, for a true test drive and get it out there. So tomorrow, so the next morning you, you don't look at it and think I need to wash it straight away, right? You take it for a drive first. Uh, yeah, I took it for a drive first. Um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, again, I was a bit nervous. Um, you know, I'm driving a Tiptronic Boxster all these years. Obviously I'd driven 911s. I've driven my brothers and, and friends and other cars. Um, but now it's my car and, and it's, it's, you know, my baby that I just got home. Uh, so a bit nervous, but, um, you know, obviously that was seven months ago and I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the car now and, and, uh, feeling extremely comfortable in it and, uh, you know, getting on it a little harder than I was in the beginning. I bet. Um, I bet. 
and you know just just having fun with it just just really enjoying it so after you get to to enjoy the car you you know you pick it up you, you it's at your house do you do you think I've got to send it to a Porsche dealer. I've got to get things checked and see if anything needs to be done. Do you get a, an inspection done? Do you get a service done? What's the process after that, Dan? Yeah, I actually, um, it was about a month into having the car that um, I took it to uh, to a, a, a Porsche specialist that that um, I know and, and have worked with. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll mention his name. It's, yeah, of course. Uh, Bill, it's uh, Bill Rutner over at South Shore Performance in Freeport. Uh, awesome guy. He's got an awesome shop and he's actually the, the local New York chapter president for the Porsche club of America. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so, you know, I've known him since I got the boxer, he checked out the boxer for me and done some services. Uh, the ones I didn't do myself. Um, <laughs> he gets annoyed at me cause I don't bring the car by enough. Um, <laughs> but I brought the nine eleven to him and, uh, you know, he put it up on the lift and, you know, gave it a once over and, uh, actually left it with him. Um, had them, you know, do the oil changes and, and check the fluids and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, the car, he took it for a test drive with me. I asked him cause he's a DE instructor. Okay. Um, so, so I actually asked him to take the car out for a ride with me and had him drive it, okay. um, uh, on the local highway there it, it, about, um, not even a quarter mile from his shop is the entrance to the, uh, Meadowbrook Parkway. Um, and he got on it pretty hard. Um, and you know, he was, he was, he said, you mind if I put it through its paces? And I said, no, Bill, go for it. And he just took off on it and, you know, uh, went up and down the gears and, and, you know, he just said it's just incredible and, and operating as it should. Um, I only had one issue, you know, he looked over the entire car. I had a, uh, I had a broken, uh, CV, um, uh, not, not the, not the, uh, bar itself, but just the CV, the, the cover. Um, so okay. it had, you know, just had sprayed a little bit of grease on the inside of the wheel. Um, so he fixed that up for me and, you know, like I said, gave it the once over and, uh, it's been, uh, it's been awesome ever since. And what about the tires and everything? Did you say you had to change the tires or you, you didn't change the tires? So I did have to change the tires. Um, two of them were actually the original tires. So wow. two of them okay. they have were to be changed. 10, yeah, they were yeah. 10 year old tires. Way too old. Um, two had been uh, upgraded at some point. Um, and so it came with the, uh, I guess the, the, you know, the, the spec tires that, um, Porsche puts on them, the Bridgestone Potenza tires. And I actually changed those out to the Michelin pilot sport for us, um, tires. Good and time. yeah, it's, it's, it's just, I mean, I guess it's just having new tires, number one. Yeah. Um, but since putting those tires on and I just put them on, um, had them delivered from Tire Rack and, and had Bill put those on. Um, and it's in, just an incredible difference. What an upgrade on on the feel. It really, I mean, the 4S is just such a, uh, you know, it's planted. It, it You just, it, it is just, you know. Yeah. It's a great it, car. It's an awesome car. Yeah. My friend, sorry, my friend in the UK who's on the very first owner story is Nick. He's got a 997 uh, Career for us. And I've talked about it before, but I love the Career for us because it, Compared to my base Carrera, it feels more planted. It doesn't feel like the GT3 or it doesn't feel like the 996 Turbo like Marco's got, but it, or Steve's GT3, but it feels more planted. But it's that view. I keep saying it's that view through the mirrors when you see the rear arches in there. <laughs> that little bit of difference, Stan, it makes such a big difference when you look through and you see it and you go, it's not just your headlights, it's just the back and you think, wow, this is, this is special. This is really special. Yeah, um, I, I I failed to mention that when I was talking about one of the reasons why I wanted the 4S was absolutely that, those wider hips. Yep. Um, I love the red reflector that goes yep. across the back as well. I uh, love the look of that. Looks um, great with the white. Looks absolutely fantastic with the white. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and, and just and just love the feel of the car. I know I know you know some guys like to get the back end a little loose and. And that's not me. That's not how I drive. I, I like the fact that it feels planted and, and um, you know, just uh, just grabs the road. And what a difference from the Boxster, right? Comparing the two. I was going to ask um, you that. Have you had to change yeah. the way you drive? Do you think that you drive the Boxster in a different way because being mid-engine to the rear engine 911? Um, I don't know if I can't. Yeah, I, I'm going to say yes. Um, braking, are, braking and stuff like that, you know, braking into a corner. Well, um, 
they're absolutely very different cars to drive um, and feel very different. I, I'm much, I'm, I become a more aggressive driver when I'm in the 911. Right. I want to drive it harder. <laughs> I want to come into the corners faster. Uh, I want to exit the corners faster. Yeah. Um, I brake a bit harder. It is, you know, it's just fun in that way. Um, the Boxster is kind of in comparison, a very civilized drive. Yeah. Um, top down cruising along the beach, you know, in the sunset, that kind of, that kind of experience for me. Um, and I'm fortunate, listen, I, I know I'm extremely fortunate to have both cars and both experiences and be able to keep them in, you know, both in my garage at the same time. Um, and you know, it's, it's, I, I know I'll use both of them. Um, and you know, but I, I truly, I wanted the coupe. I didn't mention that either, but I just love the lines of the coupe. I did yeah. not want, I did not want the cab in the 911. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, we've got the box. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good combination though. You know, it really is. I still think, I don't know, I'm a bit biased, but 997 and a Boxster, I think is a really good, comes across as a really good combo, you know, to have in your garage to me. It, it, it is. It works really well for me. Um, you just have to know yourself and, and know what your desires are. You know, I've fantasized about, you know, an early air cooled car and 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 uh, working on that. And, and I'm not I'm, I'm a basic tinkerer. I am not a guy that wants to be out in the shop working on the car all the time. Yeah, uh, I want a car that when I go to it and turn it on, it's going to work and run. And and, you know, these cars are, um, you know, for me so far bulletproof and uh, have been awesome to uh, awesome to drive. And with the with the 997 though, are you going to let you going to let your Porsche guy look after more of the servicing and more of the maintenance work or are you going to do the Boxster I know you've been doing a few things, but on on the 997 are you going to let him to do more of the work on it? Yeah, I I, I would say yes. Um, if he's listening, he'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> the price just um, went off. Yeah, but um Listen, I trust him. You know his prices are fair, and um, I, 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 that's what I envision. Um, you know, having him do do more of the work, keep keep the car well documented. I didn't buy it for resale value, yes. um, but I know that's I know that's a thing, right? I want it to maintain its value or or hopefully go up, which it already has. But um, you know, I have no idea uh, how long I'll keep this, and you know what what my next uh, part of my j- Porsche journey will be. Um, but you know, I finally found the car in the spec I want, so I don't think it'll be anytime soon as, you know, I held, held the Boxster for 20 years. Who knows what will happen with the, with the, exactly. uh, 911, exactly. but, um, but you know, it's, it's, it, I'll probably let him maintain it. And then I've got the Boxster to, to tinker around on if, if it needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good thing to have. So you said you're not really a mod guy. You don't like doing mods, but with the 997, with the C4S, 0.2.2 C4S, is there anything else you want to add to it? Is there anything else that you think it needs or it's perfect just the way it is? Uh, those two things that I mentioned are really the only two things on, on my mind right now. Okay. Um, you know, going from a modern car, as I said, I have a Jeep, so, you know, that's a modern car. Um, so, you know, there's some things you miss, right? There's the backup camera, there's the Apple yeah. CarPlay, Um you know, there's there's some things that when you get in, you've got to adjust your your mindset and, and yeah. the car you're driving. Um, but there, I, I really don't envision myself modding the car anymore. Um, I, you know, the, the steering wheel is one of those that it's it's not a critical thing to do. Obviously, the one that's in yep. it is beautiful. Yep. Um, it might be something I get to. The door sills will drive me a little crazy getting in and out of the car every time I do. So yep. those I know I'll definitely do. But that's probably it. They're easy yeah, to easy, replace. Easy. They're easy yeah. to replace except for the driver's door sill. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I struggle with. You need that long tool to get in there. Um, yeah. Okay, so you, you said you're going to hang on to this car for a while. I'd like to ask now about Dream Garage, the Porsche Dream Garage. At the moment, you've got a lot of people's Dream Garage. You've got a Boxster, you've got a 997, you've got a 911, you've got a Boxster. What would be your dream garage if you were picking two or three three Porsches to have at your disposal? Um, so, you know, I think I've I, I've I've got two ways to go. Um, you know, I like I said, I I've always loved the Targa, the, the look of the particularly the 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 uh, the air cooled Targas. You know, seventies yep. model. You know, Targa with the with the with the with the bar. 
Um, I'd love to have, I'd love to have one of those. Um, but like I said, I'm not, I'm not much of a tinkerer. I'm not a guy who's going to restore a car. Yeah. So, you know, for me to buy a, uh, you know, a new, uh, I'm sorry, refurbished, you know, one that's been properly cared for and, and well, well, well sorted, uh, that's going to cost a couple of dollars. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I just looking on the P car today, you know, I still look, you know, <laughs> I've got the cars I want, but I still look and there's a, there's a beautiful GT three. That's, that's, um, I'm not sure where it ended up. I, when I uh, stopped looking before, before we got on the air here, it was about, uh, it was a 2008, uh, 997.1 oh, really? GT three and it was 190 K and the auction wasn't done yet. So, okay. That's uh, good to, that's sure. good to know though. I'm glad that the U S prices are matching what they're selling for in Australia now, because the point ones are over the $300,000 mark Australian dollars. So that's about 220, 230 or whatever, a 200, yeah, about 220 U S. So, Seems like it's a it's a worldwide trend where the nine nine seven GT three has just gone crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I put my Boxster and my nine eleven together. I'm still not quite there. If I sold both of them, <laughs> um, but you know, maybe maybe one day. But you wouldn't want to do that, would you? You wouldn't want to do that because you've got the two. <laughs> you got the two different cars. You've got the choice. You know what I mean? And I have asked owner other owners on who've been on owner stories. You know, when they come out on a sunny day. And they look at their two Porsches in the garage. And this is when people who have a Cabriolet or a Boxster, which one do they pick? Which one would you pick on a sunny day? Long Island, you've got both cars there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I did one of my stories has got me with the cars and I'm standing between them and I'm kind of doing that gesture of <laughs> which one, which do, one do I pick today? Yeah. Um, and, you know, on any given day, that, that, that answer will change. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's just, it, you're right. It's nice to have the option. It's nice um, to have the option. Yeah. And, and, you know, depending on, Hey, am I, am I driving with the guys and, and looking for a spirit to drive or am I, uh, you know, going out with the wife and we're going to dinner and just yeah, going to take a nice casual ride. So good point. very different experiences. And, and, you know, I've got the option to do either. It's funny you say about the Targa, you know, I'm, I'm a Targa fan as well. I mean, I know it's heavy and the old ones are more sort of sought after, but mm. I still think, and a lot of people are going to hate me when I say this, the 993 Targa, I have been looking at it because I think it really is the underdog. It's the underdog. It's, it's still there at a reasonably low price, Dan. Um, if you get the manual, if you get it with the right wheels, I know the top has issues, but I still think it's, it's, it's a pretty nice looking car uh, for, a, for a semi-classic, not something you have to worry about too much. Right, right. Um... Yeah. And, and even, you know, the 996, you know, when I was looking, it was, I wasn't going back to the 993. I was looking at the 996 uh, targets. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they weren't, even when I was looking, they were, I think they were around 45,000 at the time. So, you know, they were affordable and, and um, uh, you know, I, like I said, I almost pulled the trigger on one. Um, and, you know, I, I, I do, I think, you know, these cars are, these cars are appreciating they're, 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 if they're well sorted and well looked after, um, you know, you really can't go wrong, but again, it's not about the money. It's about the experience and driving the car and just enjoying it while you have it, caring for it while you having, have it. And then, you know, eventually someday pass it on to the next guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dan, we're almost at the end of the podcast. Let's just get on to your, let's get on to those spirited drives that you take in your new 911 or even in your Boxster. If someone's coming to Long Island, someone's coming to New York or even to the US, roads that you want to drive on or roads that you've driven on, what are your favorite roads to take your, to take your new 911 career for, Esa? Yeah. So, um, I haven't done the, you know, uh, I haven't done the ride up to Storm King Highway, you know, that Bear Mountain region yet. Yep. Um, but summer is finally here. The weather's getting warmer. Um, you know, I'm sure I'll meet up with Rich and some other guys and, and do that ride sometime soon. That that is uh, that is a lot of fun um, for me locally on Long Island. There's a nice loop that I do. Um, it's uh, I'm kind of be- between two highways that head out to the beach. Um, so there's a nice loop. The Meadowbrook Parkway goes down to shore, the, the highway along the shore. You drive about uh, 10 miles along the shore, and then you head back up the Wantaw Highway um, and loop around to the southern state. So it's it's literally a loop on four different highways that go over two different bridges, um, and and part of it's along the shore. Much of it is, uh, is uh, you seeing water as you're driving. Right. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, you'll see a lot of beautiful cars as you do it. Cause a lot of guys do it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice little loop. 
So that's cool. that's where I'm driving. Cool. Sounds good. I bet you, um, so on Long Island, do you see a lot of rare Porsches on the road? I, I hear there's a few people live in Long Island who have some rare Porsches, right? Or have a good Porsche collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you know, I go over to Jerry Seinfeld's house <laughs> and uh, we hang out all the time. Um, there, you know, Long Island, uh, it is, it's crowded. There's a lot of people around, but that just means there's a lot of people, you know, that are enthusiasts as well. And, you yeah. know, within that mix of population, uh, it's been awesome. Actually, I've met already, um, you know, had the, had the opportunity to meet a new group of people. Um, you know, there's a, there's a club out East in the Hamptons called Rally Point East. Uh, seems like a great group of people I've, I've headed out there and, and, uh, you know, I've got a bit of an art background and, and I work in the, in the creative field. Okay. Um, so for me, if you can, if you can combine some kind of creative element and a Porsche car show, uh, that's awesome for me. And there's been a, a number of these, uh, around and, and that's how I ended up at Rally Point East. Um, from the from the uh, team that does the uh, the whale tail project, they were out there uh, presenting their sculptures, uh, and so I got to got to meet Johan and, and Susan and and see their beautiful whale tail sculptures and and um, and meet the team at, at Rally Point East. So that was a lot of fun, um, just an awesome experience. If you haven't seen their work, check it out. Um, and then you know, there's been a couple of other they're events. They're on Instagram, have... right? Sorry, Dan, they're on yeah, Instagram, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I have actually seen it. It's very cool. Yeah, no, it's it's a really, you know, it's a it's one of those ideas you go, oh my god, you know, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but but they're they're beautiful sculptures, and when they were there, they actually had a, a 75th birthday book for Jackie Ick, um, oh, okay. and so they I got to sign that book and put a little birthday message to Jackie, and they presented it with um, a whale tail that they presented to him, along with the birthday book, and so I got to sign that along with uh, you know everyone else that was there. Fantastic. Um, yeah, just a just beautiful, beautiful. It's a great community. Uh, great, awesome community. Um, and you know, I, I'm looking for other opportunities to meet up, and um, I'll be heading back out there. They've got another event coming up in the spring. Um, my brother and I we're going to head out to the uh, Porsche Club of America, the Porsche Parade, which is in Pennsylvania this year. So we're going to do that. Um, and you know, just it, it is it is just about uh, you know as much about the people as it is about the cars, as they say. Um, but I've truly found that I've, I've found that to be, you know, something that's real and something that um, uh, has kept me, you know, even more interested in the mark and, and being part of that community is, um, you know, I, as I said, I'm, I've got an art background. So the, the the actual beauty of the car and the sculpture of the car um, is something that, you know, is very important to my eye and, and what has, you know, uh, why I appreciate a Porsche the way I do. Yeah. Um, and being able to combine that with, you know, art related type or architecture related um, events are, are always something that's special to me. And I, I keep an eye out for those and try to do that whenever I can. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, Porsches 911s in, in particular always look fantastic with that architectural background, with that building, with, you know, because it always works so well, whether it's a, you know, an old 50s modernist building or, you know, new building or whatever, it always looks fantastic, you know, and there's a lot of people on Instagram taking great, great images. But it's great that your brother and, and your brother-in-law are both into Porsches as well. So you've got that fam the whole family thing happening um, and the community. Are you still doing the things with the Boxster, the Boxster group or not really? Um, no, we are. They, they've slowed down, obviously, with COVID. We haven't done one in a while. Um, I think the last one we did was 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 right before COVID hit. Um, a lot of that community has has 911s now, um, <laughs> and that's okay. We yeah. were never, you know, it was never cool, just though. about the boxer. Yeah, um, very cool. So who knows? Maybe we'll change the name, but the the group is still a great group, and we still get together and do our things for sure. Fantastic, Dan. We're at the end. Thank you so much. Is, is there anything else you want to share with the, the listeners before we go? I'll just say, uh, first of all, it's been an honor to uh, to be here and share my story. So thank you for that, Michael. Um, as I said, it's great to see you back on the mic. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I've always loved your, I shouldn't say always, when I got introduced to your podcast, I have truly enjoyed it. It is very much like that group that I'm describing. It's just guys sitting around talking about their cars and their passion and what why they got into Porsche and why they like it which is what makes me really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, for the listeners, I, you know, I, I'll say, you you know, everybody always says get out and drive your car. Um, but being a Boxster owner and now being a 911 owner, um, for me, it is, it doesn't matter, you know, just because you've got a better machine doesn't make you a better man. 
Um, it doesn't matter what Boxster you have. Just appreciate all the Boxster owners. Let them be part of your community. Welcome them in, um, which has been my experience, right? It doesn't matter if it's a Boxster or, or the no, a GT3. Exactly. It's, it's about sharing your love and passion for these cars um, and, you know, respecting each other and just in, enjoying each other's company. And, and that's been my experience. And, uh, you know, it, it's been a uh, privilege to share my story. So thank you. No, thank you so much, Dan. Really, really great to have you on. And you're right, you know, Porsche, every, I think someone said this to me or I, maybe I saw it in another, heard it in another podcast, but every Porsche is special. When Porsche designed that car, every Porsche, whether it's a 924, 944, 968, Boxster, whatever, it was always, it's important. You know what I mean? Each is, each has its special traits. Each is important. And there shouldn't be this competition like you've only got a Boxster or you've only got a base Carrera. It's, it's all part of the community. And I think that's changed a lot actually in in the last few years i think it actually has changed in the porsche community i think it's more welcoming and i think it is more open and and people are more sort of respectful of of all the models you know what i mean i really do think it has changed slightly compared to maybe not even a few years maybe like 10 years ago you know what i mean um and i think that's fantastic yeah i agree with you Uh, really enjoyed it thanks so much for coming on i'm going to tell people your i'm going to tell people your instagram because you want them to go over and follow you right at 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 dano underscore ny Um, there's a few pictures of your car on there. There's some other images on there. You've got the stories there of when you got your car delivered. And I might put that, like I said, I might put the link of uh, P car market. If you don't mind in the, in the podcast description, if I remember, I'm sure I will. Um, so people can go and check out. There's a lot of images of your car there, but it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great example. You know, I'm a big fan of the 997.2 or .1. They're both, uh, they're both special. Obviously the .2 is just that little bit better, but fantastic. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right, everyone, uh, that's Dan coming in from the U.S., from New York, with his original 97 Boxster 986 in Arctic Silver uh, and his uh, 2010 997.2 uh, Carrera 4S in Carrara White. Very, very nice. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. Bye for now. Bye.